Today, we have a great, great episode for you. We're going to talk about two of our favorite things around here, fruit and sex. Listen, when you look at this, what do you see? You know what you see. When you see a banana, what do you see? How about this? How about this, boo? What's going on here? Something's going on here. We're going to talk about it today. We're going to break it down today, okay? And um, I got a special guest, too. So I don't know if you know this, but every time you eat fruit, you are having sex. Did you know that? <laughs> What's up, Lance? Thanks for being here, boo. Um, I don't want to hear nothing about the outfit, Sherry. It's the fruity sex episode, so I don't want to hear nothing from you. I don't want to hear it. What did you expect? Uh, you shouldn't have approved this. You shouldn't have hooked. You shouldn't have hooked me up with Eli. Okay, so we are going to be talking to my friend Eli, who just put out a video on. <clears throat> I'm really nervous. On sex and fruit. Fruity sex, if you will. And so where is Eli? I don't feel that way when, I'm, when I eat fruit. Oh, it's just me? Oh, it's just me. Oh, okay. Hi, Eli. He's here now, so we can get into it. Um, <laughs> request, please, Eli, and we will break it down for them. I'm really excited. Basically, what's going to happen today, guys, is I found someone in this fruity world that also has sex with fruit. And he agreed to come online to teach us how to do it. So um, hopefully he is prepared. I don't know, we're not gonna get naked, don't worry. Uh, but we're gonna teach you guys how to have sex with fruit. It's really, it's really important. Let me bring him in. <laughs> okay. So, I got a few notes because I knew I was gonna be nervous. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> That's a wonder, wonderful introduction. Oh gosh, do I have to turn this thing over? Okay, hold on. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Oh, yes. Okay. So, Can you see me real? Yeah, there we go. Eli, you only have yourself to blame because <laughs> you put out this video and truth be told, I've never watched a video of yours until this video. Okay. And when I saw the title, I dropped everything. <laughs> Stop. I stopped. I dropped everything and I watched the video. Quite a video. And um, I have to say, I'm really excited to talk to you because I've been talking about this for years and people think I'm crazy. And um, I am. And so are you. And so I'm excited. Oh. So let's dive right into it, Eli, please. Um, I want to start with the D, okay? So, um... With the D? Yeah, the D. The D, okay, yes. During, uh, what are dur you... Yeah, uh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Okay. So, um, why is it that durian, okay, makes... And I don't know, Eli, <laughs> I don't know what words we can say and what we can't say. So I'm just going to say them all. Okay, fine. <laughs> why, why do you think that durian specifically makes some people horny. And I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> that is a good question. Why does it make some people horny? Well, okay. I mean, for one thing, for one thing. Now, I, I'm not like uh, a chemist, so I haven't peered into the intricate chemistry of durian. Uh, so th maybe there's some sort of chemical in there that just happens to be peculiar to durian that has some sort of effect. It stimulates a particular hormone or some pathway, and some other fruits just don't seem to do that. Maybe it's that, right? Um, what, what you find very often, even, well, whether it's durian or with fruit in general, is that because blood flow tends to improve, Okay, channels of elimination begin to get uncluttered and the bloodstream is the, that is a lovely banana. Um, yeah, <laughs> and all of these, all of these wonderful, very sexy looking fruits. Yeah, <laughs> Jeanette. <laughs> I have other sex organs too, don't worry. <laughs> but yeah, they, 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 t 
tend to uh, clean things up. And so in those tiny, tiny, tiny little channels, like blood vessels that feed the sex organs, those starts to become a bit more uncluttered and people find that they have better sex function, right? And, but that's with all broad spectrum fruit. So with durian, that's a good question. I don't, I don't have the answer for that. It might just be something that I don't know about the, the chemical composition. Um, but uh, but <laughs> that's really interesting. I learned something new today too. I'm asking for a friend. Um, <laughs> so my second question is, uh, how long have you been having sex with fruits? Well, I mean, as a human being, I guess, I guess my whole life. Um, but I've been having far, far more intercourse with fruits in the last seven years of my life. Uh, almost, almost every day. Well, no, that's a lie. Uh, every day. Uh, save for, save for the periods of time where I'm taking a break from sex with fruit. Uh, you know, doing like a little, a little bit of a fast, which is always important. Uh, even, you know, even in, uh, even if we're not talking about fruit, even if you're having, you know, regular skin concordance with uh, someone else, uh, a, a good break to rejuvenate yourself is always a good idea. So, yeah, I would say for yeah, the best part of seven years now, I've been, been having this exchange, this lovely divine exchange with, with fruit. And it seems to bring out good qualities in the human being. So. The real point of this live, guys, mm -hmm. see who is more awkward, me or Eli? <laughs> I just want you to know. <laughs> so far, it's me. Um, so, Eli, I want to talk to you about this uh, because you have a brilliant video. You have a brilliant video on the topic, and I got really excited mm -hmm. uh, watching it um, because, and, um, and I, honestly, it's something that I've been thinking about for years and years and years. Uh, I've been having sex with fruit for 11 years, so you're still a noob. Gosh. So you can learn a few things, <laughs> but, you know. I still we'll got ways to go. Oh, sorry? I still got ways to go. You yes, know, of course. I'll learn in time. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> uh, now, okay. Let's talk about how specifically when you eat fruit, yeah. you're literally, and guys, we are not exactly talking about having sex with fruit. Although, if that's what you're into, hey, I can think of worse things. Okay. <laughs> if that's what you're, because Eli, I'm not saying I've ever looked this up, but people do have sex with fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I'm not saying I, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying I uh, do or don't, and I'm not saying you don't either. But we're talking about eating fruit because when you eat fruit, you literally are having sex with it, and it makes you feel alive and vibrant and abundant. And uh, let's just start with there. Let's start there, Eli. Okay. What, what happens sexually? Yeah. And you can get specific with your performance. What happens to you? sexually when you eat fruit so what happens with you sexually when you eat fruit okay so what's happening and like you said i, I know that there are some people that that actually physically use their fruits to to simulate a, a, a sexual process and, and we're not necessarily talking about that um but it's interesting that all these fruits that you're holding up fruits that you see in general, they tend to look like sex objects, uh, excuse me, sex organs, w one way or the other, right? They're pretty sexy. And, and there's a reason for that, but we'll get into it. We'll get into that as we go on. So I just want to clarify, Eli, this yeah. is not watermelon juice. This is watermelon cum. I just want to <laughs> that. It's a, the recipe is available in my new ebook. Click the link in my bio. That's Thank you. Thank you for sharing that wonderful bit of information. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Okay. So what, what's happening, right? What, what are we talking about? I, you know, what are we talking about here when we're saying, you know, have sex with fruit? And essentially what's happening is you are taking part, all right? You, you are uh, playing a role. You are being an agent in the, uh, the sexual reproduction of namely the tree or the plant that is producing the fruit, right? So what you're doing is you're, you're becoming an intermediary in that process, in that divine process of, of procreation for the plant, right? Because the, the plant isn't, you know, it's, yes, it's a, it's a beautiful, harmonious relationship, 
kind of like if you're if you're an actor and you have an agent it 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 it's uh good for both of you it behooves both of you to find work because that makes the agent happy and it makes the performer happy uh but the agent isn't necessarily out of the goodness of his heart or her heart just giving you work right it's not it, because it, there's a definitely a personal gain right in giving you the work so think of a tree like that it's what it's doing is it's actually <laughs> seducing you okay the tree is actually enticing you right to take part in the eating of the fruit and there thereby uh, uh disseminating seed onto the ground so, like an impregnation right so the, the the tree requires you and your agency to be able to impregnate uh the earth right do you and wear protection so, so, when you have sex with fruit do you wear do, protection or oh you do you no, no no not at all no, no, this is something that you do completely raw. Yeah, you, you wouldn't want to protect yourself from, from the effects of sexual intercourse with, with, uh, with a tree. I like the raw. I like the raw. <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> raw vegan. Yes, okay. <laughs> raw, right. raw, to clarify. raw vegans. Oh, my God. I had to clarify. Mm. Okay, sorry, I missed it. Did you, did, you, uh, <laughs> did you say something that I missed? Continue. No, I'm sorry. Okay, continue. Yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, the comments are funny. Yeah, for, I know, that's, I never even thought of that protection. So that's essentially what you're doing, okay? And so al almost unwittingly, what, what, what's happening is the, the, you are engaging in a, in a type of sexual intercourse with the tree that results in a child, that results in impregnation, right? That results in propagation of the species. And, uh, and so that is very interesting. It's really interesting because it seems to be something that is a bit more peculiar to fruit and specific to fruit rather than all of the, or in, as opposed to all of the other types of things that we eat that are culturally normal, where this process is not happening. And again, you call it a coincidence, but you seem to get the, the most life-affirming, life um, upbringing, rejuvenating, healing effects when you engage in this uh, act of sexual union with your plants via the fruit, via eating the fruit. And, um, and, and again, there are lots of different reasons for this. There, you know, there's some esoterica that, uh, that goes on to help explain why this might be the case. Right, having to do with just what the creative essence is, like what that what that force of creation actually is, right? From an energetic, from an etheric uh, point of view, and uh, so so it's 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 very interesting. But uh, I'll let you if you have a, another question, then you can go ahead. But that's essentially what's happening is is you're simply taking part in the in the plant's reproduction reproduction and the propagation of its of, of itself of its species by in, in effect having sex with the plant uh i joked in the video that you may not know this is happening and basically a, a tree or a plant is seducing and raping you and you know <laughs> making children and you just you had no idea it's very subtle very very sneaky uh so it, yeah it's it's a it's an interesting concept and uh there's there's more to unpack there but that's essentially what's happening to answer your question yes Guys, if you have any questions about fruit or sex or fruity sex, please put it down below in the question section, okay? Put it in the question section because Eli and I are going to get a little distracted here. <laughs> if you put it in the section, I will, I will go to it at the end, okay? So please, any questions there. Okay, Eli, so in your brilliant video, you said, you said the only way to actively, this is a direct quote, and I know you <laughs> love when people quote you out of context, <laughs> especially about fruit sex. Um, so you said, the only way to actively participate in the energy of procreation, which, which seems to ignite life, is to eat your sex. Yeah. Okay, I thought that was such a brilliant quote. And I, um, you, yeah, you also said some other ones. Wait, Probably. one of my favorite was, um, Oh, I'm forgetting, but uh, negotiation of the flesh, I like it as well. Um, 
I, uh, <laughs> I've been studying that as well. And Trying to keep it PG, you know, that's, that's <laughs> struggling to keep it PG is what's happening. <laughs> You're very good at that. Okay, so, so now can you please touch on that, uh, how um, eating this sex organ, because guys, these are sex organs. Yeah. And when you eat them, uh, it's the only way. So can you tell us some of, more of the benefits of eating sex organs? Yeah. And I guess if in order to do that, I kind of have to I have to give a bit more like context of what's going on behind the scenes. Right. And like I said before, there's there's a reason why Mother Nature's designed fruits to look like sex organs. Um, it, I, I shouldn't even say not sex organs because sex organs look the way they do. Um, not because it's just random it's it's because there are divine geometric harmonies right that that those organs are based off of that when they when these forces uh slow down and accumulate and coagulate right and slow down from the high vibrational place they come to those are the harmonies that they take on right so okay so let me before i get ahead of myself let me back up right we're talking about the essence of creation here, okay? So we're, we're talking about the, <clears throat> the, the property of divinity, all right? If you think about the, the property of a god or the god or the architect of the universe, right? The, the main function or, or one of the main obvious roles that that type of being would have would be to create, right? To create the worlds, right? to create life forms, the planets, the solar systems, to create, basically, end of story, right? And in order to do that, in order to create, it seems that the universe has been set up in a way where the, the, the driving power of creation is the force of love, okay? Mm. If, you cannot, if you guys are following me on this. The force of love is what is required in order to create. You could also call it a... Um, uh, a union of polarized opposites, okay? Or a union of uh, diametrically opposed energies coming together and creating the third entity, creating whatever the creation is, right? Which is an act of love, all right? So at the highest level, that's, that's what's happening, is you have the force of creation, all right? The force of creation desires to create life, matter, whatever it is. And it does that because it has so it's just exploding with love. And that love force is what uh, powers the creative essence. All right. Now, when that force of love, that divine force of love coalesces, all right, and in a physical world. So now this, this, this creator has created a, a solar system, a physical planet, an earth, whatever, you, the whole shebang, all right? In the slowing down processes, or process of this energy, right? Coming into physical manifestation, what happens is those energies wrap themselves up in laws, in, in physical uh, geometric laws, laws that govern the order of the universe because you need order and structure it, otherwise it would just be chaos right with with no laws or order no ordered structure to to regulate and govern how things like thoughts work how things like emotions work we, we might think that these are just airy fairy concepts that are just playing around in the ether at total random no 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 these all operate on strict harsh laws that govern energy that govern um how how these things work otherwise it, it would be chaos otherwise you know you could feel that you were happy and then all of a sudden neural ke um, chemistry would just release that you're sad or that you're angry because there are no laws it's just it, it's just chaos right it doesn't work like that so um ordered laws trickle down into the physical world and when it comes down to the fruits we eat or any kind of organic matter right um that love frequency that love energy it has a mathematical geometrical counterpart in the physical world 
And those geometrical mathematical counterparts, for whatever reason, right? The, the, the creator designed it to be this way. Don't ask me, ask, ask it. Those geometrical harmonies tend to look like the things that we see as sex organs or, or the like. Um, the, the vesica Pisces, for example, is when it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shape where two circles, we can conceptualize this if, if you have a circle and each of their centers, okay? So each of the center points are on each other's uh, circumference, right? The, the, the place where they overlap creates what we see as a vesica Pisces. It's a divine shape. It's, 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 a, it's a mathematical geometry that is used in the creation of life. You can see it when, um, when an egg is fertilized and then the new, the new child starts to grow. You'll see these vesica Pisces everywhere as the cells proliferate in this divine order uh, pattern. It's, it's mind-blowingly beautiful. Like you, you, can't even, you can't even conceptualize how, how wonderful this is. So, um, and that happens not only at the physical level, but at an energetic level. It happens with thoughts. It can, on and on it goes ad infinitum. So, my point is, in saying all that, is that that, uh, that type of geometry in creating the physical human body, when it comes to the love essence or the, the organs that create, the organs that help to express that divine power of creation, the, the body is designed in such a way that those harmonies kick into gear in the formation of your sex or, organs and they create these divine shapes, right, that come from the beyond. Now, when it comes to the fruit, because those things encompass the same creative potential, the, 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 the plants are trying to reproduce just like you are. And so when the architect or God or nature is, is in coding the reproductive force in these plants or in humans or in other animals, it draws on the same type of formula and creates reproductive organs that look like mathematical geometric harmonies that we're familiar with in our own body. So it's this amazing similarity. It's this amazing harmony between, um, the, between a couple things, our sex organs, um, the, the love force, the creative force, and the sex organs of plants, right? And uh, it, it, I mean, it's just, it's just so interesting. Uh, it, it, you know, it all works on such very, very, very precise laws. If it were any other way, the universe would not make sense. There would be absolute chaos, okay? Energetically speaking, uh, electromagnetically speaking, po positives and positives, they repel each other, okay? Because the same polarity does not create life. It is only, nature has determined that it is only the opposite polarity that unites together, bringing the, um, the separate pieces together to make something new. That is the way it's been structured and there's nothing we can do about it. All our subjective uh, ideas about this make no difference, okay? Uh, negatives and negatives repel. If that's for a very particular reason because if it didn't do that, life would not be possible. Water wouldn't exist. Water would just be floating in the ether, turning into you know, rhinoceroses for no reason. Like it, nothing would make sense if there weren't these strict laws. And so it's so it's so interesting where you see this love force having very particular mathematical geometric shapes and, and, and harmonies. And you get that when you eat fruit. And it's and it tends to when you participate in this creative force, right, this creative loving force, it tends to ignite creative loving forces in your body as well, as a wonderful byproduct of, of doing nature's bidding and participating in the right work, right, in the, in the work of nature. When you participate consciously, you are rewarded with the life essence itself. It's, it's bloody beautiful. Like, it's, it's just, it's just amazing. Um, sorry, I rambled on there for, for a bit. It's but, okay. I didn't yeah. hear anything you said. I was thinking about having sex with fruit. Um, so, Joshi R.Y. said, you ready, Eli? I'm ready for this. Fruitarian vagina tastes better. Question, 
what is your experience with this and do you agree? Oh, you bastard. Um, <laughs> oh. You guys are you guys are really challenging my ability to keep it PG. Uh, okay, so fruit is very cleansing, right? Fruit is uh, it doesn't produce waste products. It cleans the system out. It doesn't encumber you or burden you with additional waste products. Okay, when you eat like yourself, you've noticed this. I've noticed this. Body odors are something that no longer afflict you, right? It would be very logical to assume that when your your lifestyle is in harmony with this with this path, that of course the the fluids that you produce are going to be less saturated and less encumbered and and, and just less polluted by the stinky, rotting, fermenting waste products that other food tends to create. So to answer your question, uh, yes, this is the case. Yes, this is something I've been told. Uh, yes, okay, without being super specific, um, you can expect that type of change in your, in your physical body at least, where, yeah, the things, your, by, your effluent, your byproducts will start to reek of the, of the putrid foul essence of things that don't do well in your system, that things that aren't supposed to be there, things that nature didn't incentivize you to go after for a particular reason, right? So you avoid all those things, you start putting into your body um, <laughs> the creative essence, right? Basically, you, you, start, you just start getting plowed by plants, right? You do that every day and yeah, wonderful things happen. That's a, quote, cool. that's a new quote for me. <laughs> <laughs> I that's a good one eli i'm gonna write that down yeah no that's please don't no, no, legacy. no um no, no. okay oh. so eli i want to keep mm. it sexy here but mm -hmm. i do have a question that i really think is very important for us to talk about although i do have a lot more sex questions for you okay but i so just be prepared but i want to know why doesn't it work the same yeah. if we just eat the testicles of an animal, which some people do. And I hate to bring this up, so let's keep it a little short because I want to keep it sexy, you know? Mm. Um, but uh, I'm just wondering, does it work the same if we eat the sex organ? Because people are eating like, I don't know, like testicles of animals and like vagina. They eat, um, I don't know, like whale vagina or something. Some people eat crazy things. Yeah. Um... Is it the same? It, it, you, it would be tempting to think so, yes. It would be very tempting to think that that would be the case. And, you know, playing devil's advocate, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's something that we have to, you know, to deal with, right, in, in looking at this, this approach. The, the only problem is you run into a couple of other principles and laws that would preclude that type of behavior, right? So it's, it's, the, it's not a common thing. It's... Uh, it takes a very special person to, to very willfully try to uh, circumnavigate their natural senses to be able to find a severed uh, bloody emu testicle appealing as food, right? You, you have to be willfully in denial of what your senses are telling you, right? Either through culture or because your YouTube channel uh, is has caters to that, or you have some something that that tells you, okay, what? As much as humans are repulsed by blood, gore, and all these all these types of things, um, you, you know, just put that aside and force yourself to to do this thing, to eat this thing, because intellectually we think it's you know it's life sustaining. Right? I don't force myself. No. Fruit. Yeah. In fact, I force myself on fruit all the time. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. Because and, and nobody has to teach you this. Children will will do this instinctually. But I can, you know, I can gu guarantee you, if you throw uh, the, the penis of a of an elk in front of a child, they're they're it's just it's just a, a weird severed thing, right? They they're not going to eat it. 
but they will eat the the pineapple or they will eat the watermelon or, or whatever because it smells wonderful it entices them the colors are fantastic um we they, they simply don't respond to the colors and smells and the looks and appearances of death right so this is something that has to be culturally programmed into us now okay enough of that yeah. uh <laughs> sorry but i have very important questions yeah yeah no problem including one that you tried to not answer so i'm gonna ask you again ah. um can you please talk I, i'm such an asshole <laughs> talk about your sexual performance has it improved since eating a fruit-based diet and can you be very very specific oh come on <laughs> jesus christ uh be very specific well, yes Wow. Um, okay. All, fu all of your functions improve. Okay. Your body fun. It's, it, it, you can't avoid a complete systemic overhaul when it comes to eating properly. All right. You can't avoid this. Everything will start to work better. Car your cardiovascular system works better because it's cleaner and it's less encumbered. You so are your sex organs. Okay. And everything will start to clean all your, your the channels of elimination from your skin and all this kind of stuff. So what that, <laughs> you bastard, what that looks like, <laughs> right? What that looks like what is, like, Eli, what exactly does it look like? <laughs> it looks like just, oh my God, better. I'm losing or now. So right now we, we started the competition. Who's going to be more awkward. This is now my turn to be a bit more awkward. Uh, Eli is so, so good. <laughs> what does it look like, Eli? What does it look like? Can you just tell? I don't, <laughs> I don't no, Those are really sexy. Those are very sexy. But what, what I, what I was going to say, like when they, what it looks like on the surface in terms of feeling and behavior and function is it <laughs> Is it just looks like, um, you know, whether it's longer sustained erections, easier time having er uh, erections, um, you know, people that are that are getting uh, into their elderly years, for example, uh, you'll start to know that they you notice that they have the more random kind of erection. Guys have this, right? Guys have random erections where, you know, it has nothing to do with sex. And you're, you'll just be driving and, you know, thinking of the of the last a tree that you just chopped in half and then all of a sudden an erection is like wow what the hell is this and so these these types of things will will start to happen and then they're indicative of just good blood flow and whatnot uh so so yeah the answer to your question is it, of course those things improve because everything improves it's part of your whole systemic chemistry where you can't you can't avoid it so um it's just one of the wonderful byproducts of Again, you know, having sex with plants, right? It's, it's funny, uh, you, you know, your sex function improves because you're, you're just having sex every single day. All it's day, every like day. Practice, I guess, right? Yeah, to be clear, guys, I don't do fasts. I don't abstain. <laughs> I have sex all day, every day, for years, for 11 years. So Eli actually doesn't even know what the hell he's talking about. I've been having sex way longer. But anyway, that's why I... <laughs> I'm so sexy. Okay, so uh, question. Uh, first of all, 40, you are so funny. 40 says that I need a fruit-based OnlyFans. Well, guess what, 40? <laughs> I had one. I had a fruit-based OnlyFans, and it Come got- on. So <laughs> I had to cancel it, because it was- Oh my God. People are just, people, it's, <sighs> people are creepy, okay? Mm. And mm. I was trying to have fun with it, but it wasn't, I don't know. What I only found, I guess it's, I, I need to get a website that's only for fruitarians. You know what I mean? Because there was more than fruitarians on there. Yeah. So something uh, else that I wanted to ask, I want to touch on. First of all, thank you, Zin Rosie, for being here. It's 2 a.m. in Australia, and she stayed up to watch this. <laughs> he also said he was up as well earlier before this live. Ooh, he said he buzzing. some stuff was going on. Okay, so <laughs> question. If you are... If you are, okay, ladies, this is for you ladies, okay? So if you're out there and you are dry down there, mm -hmm. that's not normal. 
you're not supposed to need these toxic lubricants that people use. Like, I don't even, do you even know the ingredients in these things? Because I don't. I, I don't know. I mean, they're, su they're supposed to be, you know, just innocuous and like, uh, but you know, you can't, you can't trust these companies. I haven't looked at the ingredients list of a lube. That's never something that's come up where, you know, I was interested, but I, I'm sure that it's something that you don't want to be putting literally inside of you. Right? I'm sure. I can't believe that people use this and some fruitarian, some raw vegans and some vegans, they use coconut oil. You're not even, you're not supposed to need any of that. If you yeah. need any lubricants when you're having sex, it means you're dehydrated. And so Eli, can you please talk specifically about um, your experience with, uh, no, just kidding. So wait, <laughs> can you please tell us um, why are people dehydrated and um, what can they do about it? Mm -hmm. It's obvious, but please. Yeah, no, no, of course. I mean, it, it just, it, these things are good because they always bear repeating, you know? We need to, we need to drum this stuff into our minds because the world is out to get you in every conceivable way. So you know, let's let's do the good work here and make sure that everybody's getting some good information. The, the way to stop doing this is the same way that you would have to approach any problem, whether it's intellectual, emotional, or physical, right? First, you have to identify what is dehydrating you. You have to identify what the cause is. And the very first step in making this, um, making this change is you have to eliminate the things that are hurting you, or in this case, dehydrating you. That is the first first thing to do. So, um, you know, things that dehydrate you, uh, over-reliance on cooked foods, um, anything that's acidic, everything that leaves behind that acidic uh, residue, any of your meats, any of your dairies, oh my God, dairy will clog you up, stuff you up, and dehydrate the crap out of you. Eli, I'm so sorry. I don't want to cut you off, but you just did yeah. me that a lot of people they say that, um, okay, like soy increases your estrogen. And if you're not eating meat, you're not going to have testosterone to have good sex or get it up or be hard enough. Um, the absolute no. opposite happens. The absolute, and that's how you know there it's truth because it's the opposite of the mainstream. Everything is backwards here, guys. And I just wanted to say that. Sorry, Eli, but like no. that's big. People, men out there, there are still men in 2022 that are eating dead animal body parts because they think that it increases their testosterone. It's, it's mind blowing. Jeanette, like what, I mean, common, common sense here. What, what would we imagine gives us more estrogen eating plants? Okay. Or eating actual animals that have estrogen hormones racing through their body 24 seven. Hello, hello, guys. This is not rocket science here, okay? You know, if if you, oh my, God. yeah, I'm glad you mentioned this because it's it becomes very silly. And and soy, you know, soy does not does not do this. I mean, I'm I don't I don't eat soy products, but for for the vegans that do, I mean, this is not a concern. It's a different mechanism, right? It's not you're not actually getting estrogens you're getting phytoestrogens and they work in a just in a different way in your body okay it's not like eating actual estrogen if you were to go and just you know mow down on a, on a porcupine um, uterus right so you, you just yeah so we got to get get that out of the picture because it's silly um now okay so and what was what was, I was going into? What was I going into just just prior to? Sorry, Eli. You were speaking about the things that dehydrate us. Yeah. Yes. Of course. Yeah. This, the things that dehydrate you. So yeah, I mentioned salt. Okay. I mentioned uh, dairy. I mentioned like animal products. Over reliance on cooked foods. Um, seasonings like like salt. Okay. Aggressive seasonings. Uh, oils. Yeah, all of these are going to dehydrate you right? Sugar, processed sugar, you do not want to be eating anything with processed sugar. Uh, any kind of food additives, if you're buying things that have ingredient labels, uh, the, I, I would say you have to stop, um, you know, like the refresh on reading ingre ingredients properly and being able to be ingredient label literate. But you don't even have to do that. Just avoid things that have ingredient labels. And it just takes away all the complexity, right? Just automatically. 
Um, all of these things dehydrate you. I'll give you a quick example. You put sugar into your body, like processed sugar, okay? And because it's been stripped of all its minerals and enzymes and fibers and all that, when you put it back into your, bot into your body, it tries to reclaim all of that. So it tries to reclaim all the water, all the minerals and all the, right? And it saps your own body of those vital resources. So moral of the story, when you, when you adulterate your food, that food adulterates you, okay? It, 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 you wanna denature your food, you wanna destroy your food, your food will destroy you in return, okay? So, um, and there are lots of the, uh, smoking, I don't care what kind of smoking. People want to have this delusion that, um, you know, marijuana smoking and uh, burning carbon is not what you want to be breathing in. You want to be breathing in air. Um, marijuana, for example, uh, can affect the sex organs by, by stifling the uh, oxygen uptake capacity of, of cells and impairing uh, sex function. Uh, so, you know, the, basically, the world is against you. The, everything in diet culture has been almost designed to be pathological and dehydrating. And so we, you have to start pulling away from that, responding to your natural sensitivities and being honest with yourself about them so that you can pinpoint what exactly is food and what isn't. And then when you do make the average departure, you know, just for fun or whatnot, you go ahead, but we do it with knowledge. We do it with awareness of what we're doing, right? Because in the absence of that, then we'll just, we just have no idea what's happening. And we'll always be confused when we have these sexual dysfunctions uh, with dehydration and whatnot. And we're, we continue to eat things that dehydrate our bodies. And, you know, two and two is four, right? So. Uh, yeah, I love that answer. Thank you so much. I, wow, I took a lot of notes because I didn't know a few of those things. And so we do have some questions, Eli. Um, Raw Love, great, great name. Raw Loved asked, this is a question for me. Is there a juice you like to make, Misfit Vegan, to support mm. a nice smelling kitty? Okay, so Sweet that's a great- Smelling kitty. Yes. Woo. Now, there's a reason why I'm promoting watermelon so much. So let's just leave it at that. Mm. You are what you eat. You are what you, you taste. The things you, you eat, the things you taste, are the way you're going to taste. And by the way, I wrote something for this episode, Eli, so I'm just gonna read it real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I wanted to get it perfect. <laughs> Guys, fruit is not just the healthiest food on the planet. It is sexiest, okay? Fruit contains all of the essential vitamins, minerals, nutrients that we need, and it makes us feel good. It makes us look good. It makes us smell good. And you guessed it, it makes us taste good. But don't just take my word for it. Guys, <laughs> try fruit. And when you're talking about you want a specific juice to make your kitty cat smell good and taste good, it's not going to work, boo. You need a lifestyle change. I can't prescribe you. You know, they always say, Eli, that pineapple juice. Like, I've been hearing this my whole life. Drink pineapple juice before you have sex. Guys, it don't work like that. It don't work like that. You cannot eat dead animal body parts and then have a pineapple juice and expect to taste like pineapple. No. You're going to have to put in the reps, boo. You want the results? Put in the reps. Drink pineapple juice every day for a year. Then have sex with Eli and see what he thinks. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, and then eliminate the other crap. Eliminate. 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 Because you don't deserve that, boo. You deserve to look, feel, taste and smell your best. You have one life. Why not live the best one? And it tastes Absolutely. the best too, Eli. That's the crazy part. This mm. food tastes the best of any food on the planet. I know. I, I know. I, yeah. feel, I feel like I won the lottery. Every yeah. single day. Yeah. I, I have a papaya sitting in my fridge just like right now, just like you're holding. I mean, I, I mean, look at the stuff. I mean, just look have, at the stuff, guys. But you're gonna stuff is the papaya right after this too. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Like this stuff is just screaming at you. The the properties the properties of the fruit. I mean, look at this. I mean, that that's a bloody vagina. Like that, not a bloody, but it's a it's a vagina, right? And 
fruit is enticing you sexually in, in many of the same ways that humans try to entice you sexually, right? They have attractive colors, okay? They, they stand out. They stand out from, from the rest of the vegetation. So they, they try to be um, exceptional, right? Um, you know, they, they smell good. They smell, they don't smell like the other types of vegetation. They definitely don't smell like the other types of cooked foods and whatnot and stimulant. There's a very peculiar and particular smell associated with them they're, because they're attractive and they attract your senses to go after them just like you would go after another person that you want to uh, who you want to remove the air between you right it's the same thing so you are full yeah. of wisdom uh mm. full of great quotes there so um, you are what you eat it's so yeah. simple it's so simple but why eli why can't mm. us humans why do we have to make it so complicated why can't we just follow the simple laws of nature yeah yeah, it, you know, because human ingenuity gets in the way. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's a war between our creative impulses and our gift, you know, our human gift of having the ability to choose any path we want. And it's, it becomes this ego-driven thing where because I can do all of these things, I'm going to do those things instead of obey, right? We have a problem with, um, a, a, a hierarchy, right, with, uh, with a prescribed set of laws that we must obey because for some reason that makes us feel inferior. And it's just like, no, I, there, there are no laws. Morality is subjective. It, you know, we just make it up as we go. The laws of diet are subjective. We just make it up as we go. It, we want to fall into all of these absolutely ridiculous um, traps. And we do it at our peril. When in reality, what's happened is nature has said, this is the law. Obey it if you want, right? And if you do, you will reap the benefits. If you choose of your own will to, to uh, you know, just dismiss these laws as if they don't exist, you can do that too. But what you cannot escape are the consequences of not obeying my laws. Yes. Right? If you don't obey the, uh, if, yes, sorry. But if you don't obey the law of the universe, your pussy's gonna stink. I can't help you. I can't yes. help you, boo. Yes. I can't get <laughs> a juice prescription. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Eli. No, that's no, that's you're right. That's absolutely how it works, right? It's, we want the easy way. We want it. We want to just pollute our bodies, and then when it comes time to have that, um, you know, that epidermal discussion with someone, we want to just say, "Oh, I'm gonna have some pineapple juice right beforehand." And it's going to do away with the sins that I accumulated for the past eight years of my life, um, you know, eating, eating hamster spleen every day. No, that's not how it works. No, that's not how it works. It's, it's a momentum principle. You need to make you need to be responsible to your body. And by do, you have to do that by obeying the laws of life. And when you do that, that's when you're, uh, that's when your love channel will start to be uh, uh, happier you with know, you. Eli, I wish so, we're running out of time, but mm. I wish so bad that we could do a one-on-one -on -one with every single person in the world oh my. that doesn't understand how incredible they can yeah. feel, they can look, they can taste, if you will. <laughs> Um, if they would just leave the animals alone and leave wow. processed food alone and start to enjoy their favorite fruit and vegetables and also know how to pick it out when it's right. You, you got to know when it's right. You see this papaya, guys? It looks rotten. It's perfect <clears throat> on the inside. Yeah. Um, but I just did a whole episode on uh, my show. So if anybody's interested in that, how to pick out every single fruit, click the link in my bio. Um, okay, so somebody said, Eli, Zin... Mm. She's an Australian queen. I love her so much. Uh, what's up, Zin? She said, blueberries look like nipples. Did you even realize that? <laughs> they also, ovaries, they could look like little testicles because it's a, it's a divine shape. It's beautiful, right? Symmetry, harmony, right? Th these things stand out to us as something very attractive. Whether we're looking, we're talking about architecture, whether we're talking about sex organs, fruit. I mean, look at those. I mean, th there's a reason why 
testicles and ovaries look like that, right? The, 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 that phallic shape, it's, it's a male thing. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a principle of action. It's the line. It's the direct way, right? It's the, it's the way that makes change. The females have an internal, an internal genitalia, right? It's, it's, the, it's the smooth. It's the, it's the, ugh. it's incredible. Keep it, keep it, keep it. We almost made it through, Eli. Keep it, keep it. we almost got through the episode. So uh, <laughs> somebody asked your, wow, I never thought of blueberries as nipples. I'm going to do it shoot soon. That's yeah. just hell. Um, so, cause I've done many fruit photo shoots because I have known what you said in your video. I've known this internally for years, mm. like a decade, but I never, Verbalize, I could never verbalize it until your video. So I oh. really appreciate your video. It was really brilliant. Um, somebody asked about honey. So um, they wanted to know, Eli, what are some of the negative effects of honey? Do you consume honey? And what are some of negative effects? Gotcha. That's a good question. And that's a tough question. No, I don't consume honey. <clears throat> if, if there's one animal product that would seem does the least uh, harm to you when you eat it, it would be honey. Honey seems to be very, from a chemical uh, perspective, seems to be very close to the types of natural sugars that, uh, you know, that are good for the human body. However, I can tell you from experience, all right, from trying honey and seeing how, it, how I react to it, it seems to be a bit dehydrating it seems to reside and, and linger in, in the stomach. Um, but I'm doing that testing my body though. So like I've been eating much, much more cleanly than the average person. And so I would be a bit more sensitive to any of the mal effects of honey yes. that you, you know, the average person might not detect. And so I've noticed that if I did try honey, when, just as an experiment, I could notice that it was it, it was dehydrating. I felt my throat, you know, be, seize up a little bit and it weighed in my stomach as much as it's just honey. I could feel it for the neck, for the rest of the day, just sitting there and doing something that it wasn't supposed to do. Eli, All right. All right. I want to cut you off. Yeah. No, it's okay. Another sex question. Yeah. But you just said that you eat better or you eat cleaner than the average person. So mm -hmm. does that mean you have better sex than the average person? Please be specific. That, that would mean that I'm having not only better sex than the average person, but far more frequently, far more, far, far, far more frequently. Yeah. Um, sometimes it, sometimes it's, it's an occasional treat that just happens in the afternoon. Other times it's all bloody day. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, if there's one thing I could suggest it's yeah, start making love to your to your local trees, your international trees, uh, just start just start making love with all of them. And, okay. and you're gonna reap the benefits. Guys, please go to Eli's YouTube channel to watch his full video. His YouTube channel is called the free melon society. Great name. And he um, has a great video that goes into more depth um, about this topic. I highly recommend it. And we do have another question. Um, can I eat all the avocados I want? Uh, yes, you can eat all the avocados you want. No, you cannot do that without incurring the consequences of eating all the avocados you want. Great. And so, oh, yeah. okay. oh, you're still going. Okay, go on. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's okay. Um, basically, that's it. it. Avocados are just a bit of an exception because they're so high fat. They're, they're unlike other fruits. Most other fruits tend to be very cleansing, high water content, blah, 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 blah. So when it comes to fruits that are really, really saturated in fat, avocado is one of them, olives are, are another one. You know, these are some of the only major, major exceptions. So you have to be uh, sparing in them. And you know, you don't have any other, you don't need any other guide besides how you feel. Grab seven avocados, eat them for dinner, tell me how you feel. You're gonna feel like you weigh a million more pounds, right? It, it weighs you down. But you won't feel like that if you have um, five pairs or whatnot. So you, you, just, you just experiment in yourself and let the truth echo out in your own experience. Yes. Fruity, fairy, fruity, 
wait, fairy fruit mother, my friend Ina, she said, I did experience near orgasm experiences when oh I, my. when I eat, <laughs> you're so funny, when I eat certain types of mangoes and durian. And so we, this leads us back to the top of the hour when I was trying to um, ask you about the D. So I'm wondering, have you, Eli, somebody's knocking on my door right now. Uh, I'm talking yeah, about heard... sex, there's no way I'm answering the door. <laughs> uh, like, are they crazy? So um, question, have you okay. ever had an orgasmic experience eating fruit? I mean, Where's my note? An, an orgasmic and experience. Please specific. Um, okay, I have, I have never had an actual orgasm eating fruit. I have been transfixed in absolute joy eating a fruit after a long period of not eating. There, there's that moment where it feels like I would choose this over sex any, any day, you know, any day. So I have had that experience where the taste kind of just rocks you. It's like, oh, oh my God. And you just have to like be with your thoughts for a couple of minutes. It's like, this is so good. Like I've had that moment, right? And it's interesting. I've never had that moment eating other food. From you know, in my whole life, you know, whether the pizza, whether it was the pizza or the lasagna or, the, you know, lemon chicken and all these, you know, wonderful ways that we disguise food to make it taste like it's other than what it really is. Even in those experiences, you eat stuff and it's like, yeah, this is good. But it's only fruit, you know, that had that effect where it's like, oh, my God, something about this is so clean, but stimulating and wonderful. It, yeah. So. Uh, no, but I've never actually um, uh, disseminated uh, love agents because of disseminated. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I know everybody wants to know my answer. So uh, personally, I have had orgas orgasmic experiences eating fruit, but I've also had orgasmic experiences doing other things. Mm. Like swimming in the ocean. So I swim in the ocean every single morning, Eli. No, sorry. Hold on. Give me a second. It is literally like an orgasmic experience to me because it is so pleasurable. And I think I know why now. Because I'm constantly having sex. So I'm constantly having orgasms. What? Eli's <laughs> Are you laughing at me? Oh, you're, oh, it's, you're, you're embarrassed? What's going on? No, it's, it's. <laughs> I guess I'm, it's the imagery. It's oh. the imagery that I'm playing with. I'm picturing you swimming and you're like, oh yeah, this is great. Oh. Well, it is a nude beach. I forgot to mention that as well. But anyway, ah. the, point. the point is, if you're having constant sex, then you're gonna be having constant orgasms. And um, I think we should end it here. Uh, any, <laughs> any last words about, and would you like to, um, Show us how you have sex with fruit. I don't know. If oh wow! To do it. You're not wearing pants, right? Like we. I am not. I'm not wearing underwear. That's not something I, I usually do. I am wearing shorts though. I'm just. Um, but a, a demonstration on how you have sex. I'm just, yes. But yeah. anything you'd like to leave us with, Eli, on fruit, yeah. sex, or having fruit with sex? Yes. Uh, the world is wonderful. Nature is wonderful. She loves you, and the the best way that you can return your love for, for nature loving you is to simply uh, have sex with her. That, uh, that's, that's how it works. Uh, or him, if you prefer him, if you're a woman, then that, that male nature loving entity, it loves you. So you, you may as well, you may as well just start helping it reproduce. Or you can go both ways if you're eating. It can go both ways. It can go both Guys, ways. I want to remind you that you deserve the best and fruit is the best Absolutely. on earth for you to look your best, feel your best, best, smell your best, taste your best. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eli. You're so much fun and you're so knowledgeable. <laughs> and um, yeah, I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you, boo. Bye, guys. Mwah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> love you very much. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.